I got Kevin Green kicking things off with me as we look at some levels and some technicals before we get into the stocks with Alex Coffey, who will be on in a bit. Uh, KG, good morning, sir. S&P's basically unch. So uh, we're going to get a slow day or what? It might be another slow day here, Oliver, as the implied volatility, if you're looking at the VIX, is only sitting at around 14. So you're looking at around a 0.8% move to the upside or downside. And yesterday, we did see a little bit of a pullback, a little bit of an inch up when it comes to the VIX. But the, the market breadth is almost sitting at around 50-50. So it was more meg mega cap names that were kind of uh, lagging. But that actually could change here today, Oliver. I mean, we had some news coming out from Google regarding quantum computing uh, overnight. And that is actually causing a little bit of a bid and optimism when it comes to tech stocks. I'm already seeing flows, actually going into Tesla, uh, as well as Google. The Google 180s are printing right now is for a lot of paper there. And then also when you're looking at the Tesla 380s, as uh, $380 as well as the $400 call. So if you kind of get this optimism coming back into the market when it comes to tech, that could kind of turn this market around. And so that's what I'm going to be keeping my eye out on uh, for the first you know, hour, hour and a half of today's trading session. Okay. I like that. Big tech, because uh, we had a fade in Tesla yesterday after it ended the week in this, like, wild gamma melt up so the fact that we turned around yesterday uh, i think is notable for tesla um so take me through that one again real quick on uh just kind of what you're seeing what levels yeah, for, for Tesla right now, I mean, there's a lot of paper, obviously, starting off the day. Uh, you're seeing some at the 380 uh, strike and then as well as the 400 strike, uh, most of them actually expiring uh, this Friday and then also looking at the March 2025 expiration. So if we see that type of similar um, situation that we saw on Friday of last week, you could probably see a little bit more of a melt up. Um, and, and, and if you have that in, uh, enthusiasm when it comes to those crypto trades, that can also kind of fuel uh, optimism when it comes to tech as well as communication services. So that's really the two areas of the two sectors that you're going to need to kind of turn this around. But when you're looking at the intraday level so far, uh, what I actually have mapped out uh, just based on the options flow or the early options flow today, it's actually pretty widened out. So uh, when you're looking at these key levels, 60-50 is going to be your first one. That's really what we're testing right now, trying to hold that as an area of support. Hopefully we have some buyers kind of stepping in and then we can kind of move back to the upside here. And then the upside resistance for today so far uh, that I see as far as flow is a 60-70 and if we do see a breakdown for whatever reason of 60-50, looking at 60-25, we actually did see some flows going into that strike yesterday. Uh, is that going to continue today? And if we do have that kind of uh, you know follow through, then we will make uh, lower lows on a relative basis if we're looking at this you know five-day chart right now. So uh, we're trying to hold on as much as possible. Let's see if the optimism is going to creep into the market here. Uh, but the, the trend is still to the upside if you're looking at the longer term you know time frame. Okay. All right. So uh, we catch a little bounce uh, at kind of that first test, it seems like, uh, which was uh, a good little way to think about yesterday, a test, basically, kind of the first little, you know, uh, tap, tap on the cage, see how the uh, fish respond. And they did scurry a bit, but then uh, kind of, uh, you know, cooled off a little bit. So 6050 basically is not a place to really be worried about. Uh, now for right now, I mean, it is uh, technically it is a gap that we are testing on that five uh, day chart, right? So there's not a lot of price discovery at this level, just on a five day basis. But if you kind of go back, this was a, a little bit of a battle area about a week, a week ago, two weeks ago. So uh, this could be a, a significant area or an inflection point here for the market. And we just have to see kind of where this is all going to pan out. Now, when you're looking at the, the longer term time frame here, 6,100 is still going to be your top area of resistance when it comes to the open interest in those levels. And then 6,000 is going to be your negative gamma area. I do have a line there at 6030, which kind of aligns with that 6025 level there. Uh, and that's just highlighting the fact that we did see a little bit of support there on November 29th, as well as December uh, 3rd. Those are some pretty light volume days, but that would be an intermediate area of support that you would look at. Maybe some buyers kind of stepping in, resetting, and then trying to move higher. And then the last thing I wanted to kind of highlight here, Oliver, mm -hmm. is the implied volatility. When you're looking at vol right now, can it go lower? I think a lot of people are asking that question, and it can. Uh, it could actually go, you know, if you're looking at the VIX, it could actually move another three points to the downside. You could see an 11, 11 and a half VIX. That is in the realm of possibility there. Now, that would be actually relatively low and, and once again, kind of cheap when you're looking at buying some protection. Uh, but we did see the same type of scenario last year. Now, this is the S&P 500 one-year daily chart, and I have implied volatility, which is in blue, historical volatility, which is in purple. And so what we are seeing right now is pretty much us hitting the same level 
levels that we saw earlier this year, pretty much mid-May through July, where we had very low implied volatility, market melted up, right? Nothing was really stopping us for the most part. Uh, and then the end of last year, going into uh, the beginning of this year, we also had a low implied volatility market. That could also suggest that we will have these compressed type of days, these small melt-up type of scenarios where we might end up a quarter of a point per day. Nothing that's really exciting for intraday traders, uh, but that's something that is in the realm of possibility. Vol is still cheap, though. I will continue to say that. Um, if you're concerned about downside risk, especially going into January, uh, it, it's relatively cheap to hedge a portfolio. Okay. Uh, so right now, the fact that we've got VIX as low as it is, it's a good reminder that if you've got a lot working for you seasonally, too, you can continue to push that and kind of test the tolerance of risk appetite and general um, complacency, which this would be kind of the time of year to do it. We had this big, big event in November. We got out of the way. It developed this big shift in sentiment that we saw from small businesses. So that kind of skews your corporate risk upwards and to good outcomes. And you've got seasonality behind you as well, consumer that keeps spending. So, all right, uh, we'll see if we can uh, plunge to new uh, VIX lows. We'll see if S&Ps catch the bounce. And if not, we come back and talk levels after uh, something bigger breaks than just 60-50. Thanks, KG. Appreciate it.